So I'd like to start the uh, November 7, uh, 2012 meeting of the Revere Conservation Commission. First item on the agenda is roll call. Vice Chair Joseph James. Present. Member Vincent Camerata. Here. Is present. Member Ann Raponi is Here. present. Member Daniel Bluestein is present. I'd like to welcome James Saboni, first uh, meeting, just appointed to the Conservation Commission. James is present. Welcome and, aboard. Um, excuse me? I said welcome aboard to oh. our new member. And I'm Andrew DeSantis, uh, chairman, present. Uh, member Laval is absent. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of October 3rd of 2012. Do I have a motion? Motion by Vice Chair. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Joseph James. Seconded by Member Vincent Camerata. To approve. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative unanimously. Hey, Kevin. Uh, as I explained to those uh, here, uh, third item was a vote for request of extension on DEP file number 061-0554-104 Summer Street, uh, Kevin Childs. Uh, an order of conditions was issued for this project on the, in uh, 2006. It was extended in 2009. In 2008, a uh, permit, well, it was 2010, excuse me. Uh, Permit Extension Act, Section 173 of Chapter 240 of the Acts of 2010, which allowed, uh, if you look at the handout of frequently asked questions in the last sentence, with limited exceptions, the Act automatically extends for four years beyond its otherwise applicable expiration date any permit or approval that was in effect in existence during the qualifying period beginning on August 15, 2008, and extending through August 15, 2012. With the, uh, the original permit for Mr. Child's project was in effect on August 15, 2008. It was extended there after on uh, December of 2009, so it would still in effect uh, and uh, would continue uh, through August 15th. Beyond this, uh, it, well, so if it's in 2012, there was an additional permit extension. They didn't print that out, uh, which I think uh, allows it to go for another two years. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, if you'd like to ask Ms. Annie, Mr. Wait, two, Charles, about his two, project. I was just to clear that up, two years. So this says four years from the previous expiration date, correct? Four years before an otherwise applicable expiration date. So it would still be in effect, that's right. Yeah. So, so what was the original expiration uh, It date? was extended in uh, December 6th, I think. Let me give you the dates. I've got them right here. It was originally issued December 6, 2006. And then it was extended on what day? It was extended on December 9, 2009. So would that mean that they have until December 9, 2013? It would mean with the four years, they would have to 13, correct. But I think Mr. Charles plans on uh, completing the project uh, substantially before uh, 60 days. 
Yes. Anybody, any questions for uh, Kevin? Kevin. Oh, would you come up to the mic, please, and just uh, state your name and address, Kevin? Kevin, give us an idea why you need the extension. I mean, there must be a good reason for requesting the extension. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, oh I don't know God. if... Uh, Test. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Did you get the question, Mr. Childs? I was uh, reviewing some paperwork, and I thought that the extension was only good until December 8th, uh, 2012. December 8th is December 9th. So I had uh, spoken, I gave a call to Andy, and I said, what should I do? And then we realized that there was the extension act was for four years until 2013. So I just wanted to be cautious and make sure that we're okay. Maybe we have problems with the building itself. No, no not problems. at all. Okay, thank you, Kev. So it means you, you can, when you're finished, you're going to come back to us? Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Not a problem, as long as he's complying well, with well, the rules yep. here. One more question, please. Did thank the storm you. affect you overnight? <laughs> <laughs> we lost a couple of shingles on the ridge vent, but past that, it, no, not at all. It was... Uh, <laughs> it was actually enjoyable being there. We stayed there with the kids at the storm just to watch. It was good. Property is in Beachmont, uh, down at the end of Summer Street, right on the edge of the marsh, down where the radio towers used to be, the edge of uh, Belleau Marsh. I don't go back that far. <laughs> well, I do because I grew up there. <laughs> Kevin's property. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, he's all set. Uh, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to do a motion. He's all set under the Permit Extension Act. I didn't realize it at the time when I talked to Kevin. So you're good to go. Well, thank you very much. Nice seeing you anyway. Okay, happy birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, belated happy birthday, Joe. Uh, next item on the agenda is a public meeting request for determination of applicability for installation of monitoring walls at Neckel Plant 135 American Legion Highway. Envi environmental monitoring work due to ammonia spill on October 5th, 2012. We have representatives from uh, Clean Harbors here. Uh, representative from uh, NECO here too, Charles. Okay, if you'd come up to uh, the microphone, it's not a public hearing, so we don't need a motion to public hearing. And just explain uh, to the commission what happened and what you need to do now going forward in the Massachusetts uh, contingency plan to ensure the uh, safety of uh, both the uh, workers at the site and uh, general public and the wetlands. Well, they had a fire uh, at the uh, facility, and there was a release of fire water, and there was some ammonia. Name, name and address for us, uh, oh, Richard. Richard McCarthy, Clean Harbors, about 42 Longwater Drive, Norwell, 02061. Okay. Okay. Continue with. Uh, uh, we responded to an incident at the facility where they had a fire, and during the, uh, the fire water came on, and they lost some ammonia from the building that mixed with the fire water. Most of it was contained within the building. Some did go out the back door. Uh, we pumped the fire water with some ammonia for a few days. Uh, all this with DEP approval, and. Uh, after a few days, the levels got down below, uh, the pH levels were below what DEP felt was appropriate for us to demobilize the equipment, the trucks, vacuum trucks, and so forth. In the meantime, we had uh, bags of citric acid, 
uh, in that's at these two outfalls there was some uh, pH issues at the outfalls which outfalls the outfalls you show the coming first, out in the building the first two towards uh, that are labeled American one Legion and highway yes you can see the surface release was outside the building right in front of uh, number two and there's a lot of processed stone right up against the building so some of the water seeped into the, that stone and we believe it worked along its way along the foundation and got into the outlet pipe for number one along with getting into outlet pipe number two but there was no surface release that went down to the outlets uh, over the top of the ground it was more a subsurface the outlets are what roof drains yes but they appear that they're not 100 percent tight where they're getting some groundwater in there because number one which is was outside the release area further to the north mm -hmm. and yet it showed up at that outfall since then we've been monitoring and it's actually back to just about background at one but there's still some ph at number two how how high it's about nine now but originally there were 12s, 13s. So it's approaching background, but we need to go in as far as closing out the site with MCP and to uh, show that there's no plume that's up against the building or between the building and the, uh, the outfalls. Nine's the background pH? Backgrounds, usually it's between five and nine as a rough number. Out there at the others, we were seeing six or seven. So it's getting closer. So you were seeing six or seven, so you were seeing acidic condition to a neutral condition, the nine being a uh, base condition. Right. We weren't seeing any acidic, though. Is that what you said? Yes. Neutral pH is seven, right? Yeah. Yeah, low it's pH it's, is it's actually uh, that site is on in low old landfill. Yes. So I think what you tend to have a slightly lower. So instead of having a seven, having a five or a six isn't isn't it really would be normal for the site. Right. I see. Okay. Yeah. And you're installing monitoring wells both uh, in the interior of the building. Uh, not yet. We've, if we come up with uh, adequate information outside then we won't need to install the interior ones oh, okay so the first B1, step is outside B2. the building has no floor drains the floor seems intact uh, we don't think there's anything under the building but if we need to investigate that later we will are you the LSP for no. the project no Ken McDermott is and actually he was planning on coming tonight but he was tied up so I'm here on his uh, behalf So you really don't know at this point how long this process is going to take. Uh, unfortunately, it's been my experience uh, with this kind of work as you do your initial uh, monitoring. You try to define extent, maybe come back, do some more monitoring. I know DEP has been uh, promulgating, uh, maybe they're not promulgated yet, but they're looking at new regulations for vapor, depending upon uh, use. I just ran into that with some underground uh, fuel storage with tanks. petroleum or yeah with yeah. petroleum tanks well the, the building had specific to that the building had been cleared by an industrial hygienist prior to them starting the operations back up so there, sh there shouldn't be any, any so you're back in operations now yeah so? there's no indoor air issues there I don't think there will be with the MCP um, you know the outfalls will probably with the rain and everything it should clean up pretty readily but then, you know, we just want to get between the outfalls and the building, and if it's all close to normal, but we can continue to monitor, and then, uh, you know, right within the release area itself, and that way we should be able to close it out. Hope, we're hoping very, you know, fairly quickly with the uh, DEP. Okay. Uh, so you've generated some reports at this point? Uh, not so more than what I sent you, but we're, we're coming up on a 60-day deadline. Okay. So we'd like to get the wells in and yeah. be able to present that to the DEP okay. on the 60 days. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, what caused the ammonia spill? 
you could help me with that. Um, hey, Jay, the, what caused the ammonia spill? Yeah. So I'm uh, Chuck Wrights. I'm the uh, engineering manager at NECO. It's not uh, completely clear what happened. We had a fire. There was no uh, release of ammonia. However, the fire was adjacent to uh, some uh, ammonia piping in that equipment. And when the fire was put out, uh, you know, it's an unprofessional guess that something happened and the uh, ammonia pipes burst. Good question. Uh, when, when they did burst, was there any contamination that went out into the marsh? Just the uh, when you were the pumping it out, the sprinkler, because it created a condition where we couldn't, uh, the, the, the clean harbors or, and our emergency personnel could not turn off the sprinkler. Um, the sprinkler ran for four or five hours, and the ammonia was immersed in that sprinkler water. So it was in the water, and then the water uh, spilled out one doorway, and so the ammonia would have been in the water out the doorway. And that went into the marsh? It didn't go into the marsh. Oh, okay. It That's was, all I asked. as Richard described, into the uh, uh, trap two, rock. The two outfalls in this trap rock leading out to that, like, stream, and basically. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, uh, when you put these, you're going to put some, like, dry wells or, or septic tanks outside that contain the water outside of it, the building? We're going to. Are you going? No, we're just going to put in monitoring wells, install oh, okay. borings, we'll test the soil, and then install But when you're doing this wells. work here, would you put bales of hay around to contain we it? We actually put hay bales at those two impacted uh, swales. Okay. And, like, so we have maintained uh, a sit. Oh, thank you very much. Citric acid there to neutralize everything. All right. Thank you. So can you just summarize the extent of the work? It looks like five monitoring wells, and, and is that correct? Yep. Okay. And your timeline for doing this? Uh, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, maybe even uh, this Friday. Ooh. Mr. McCarthy, I have a question for you. Um, what type of drilling will you be doing for the monitoring well installation? Geoprobe or? It'll be a geoprobe. So uh, it's not very intrusive? No. As far no. as uh, any uh, construction related impacts? Right, and there's not a, not a lot of uh, auger cuttings or anything like that with a rotary stem auger or anything. So. And just out of curiosity, uh, under the MCP, will you be sampling for ammonia or just pH? What are the parameters uh, for the monitoring well? Probably Sam. both. You're welcome. Through you, through you, Andy. Uh, question. Member Raponi. Yes, uh, Richard. I just. Um, want to ask a question about you refer to the fact that you applied citric acid what was that used for why was that applied help to neutralize it. Yes. You needed to do that in order to get so things on the country. Thank you very much. So uh, if I'm you still listening. find that the soil is pretty basic, what, what are your plans moving forward?
James, another question? Yeah, one other question. Was this a 24-hour uh, um, reportable condition? What was the uh, reportable condition? And uh, so uh, you're in the initial response phase right now? IRA, okay. Thank you. A uh, question to Chuck. Is this the first time you've had anything like this at the plant? This is my question. Where this happened, what was that room uh, area being used for? Was it making candy or storing it up? Had nothing to do with the candy. Okay, thank you very much. I know that Neco is a very old company, been around for many years. So you'll review your manufacturing procedure and your procedures uh, just to see if there's anything that could be implemented that might prevent something like this in the future, whether it's protective coating on the ammonia piping or something like that. Uh, Anything else, Jim? Yeah, Richard, well, when did you say the next report is going to be available? You're at the 60-day period now, so... Uh... Okay. Can we get a copy of that report uh, when you submit it to DEP, please? Thank you. I just have a question about accessing the sites for the drilling. Um, the map is a little unclear. Is that, are the sites that are closest to the wetland, are those on the asphalt road? Is, it, is that correct? Okay. Can you turn your mic on? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so you're not going to have to, you're not going to get anywhere near the wetland with your equipment? No, it's up up on top next to the building and then on this access road. Thank you. Yeah, this building wasn't originally built as a Neco plant. It was originally built as a uh, jewelry uh, assembly plant uh, for uh, Leonard Silver in the uh, early 80s. And then it went through a couple of uh, iterations. P.F. O'Connor, a building supplier, was there. Uh, Golf Day, I think, it was. And then uh, NECO occupied it uh, what, 10 years ago, something in that order. Okay. Uh, yeah. Through you to uh, Brian, uh, Mr. McCarthy. Uh, the first part of the response to Danny's question, I could not hear because the microphone was off. Would you be kind enough to repeat that and, and make sure the mic is on? Thank you. The drilling will be on the uh, access road, the gravel access road, which, uh, between the building and that access road and on the access road. Nothing in the, down in the wetland at all. Thank you. Anything further? 
Okay, we have a determination of applicability. And uh, because this is covered under a specific section of the Code of Regulations for the Wetlands Protection Act, that being 310 CMR 10.02, subparagraph A, subparagraph, uh, subparagraph 2A, activities within areas subject to the protection under Mass General Law 131, Section 40, which is the Wetlands Protection Act, except for minor activities within the river front area meeting the requirement of 310 CMR 10.56, Paragraph 6B, activities that are temporary in nature have not negligible impacts and a necessary planning and design purpose. Uh, that is installation of monitoring wells, exploratory burn, borings, uh, sediment sampling, and surveying uh, that a negative determination would be appropriate in this case. So do I have a motion to... Motion by Vincent Camerata. Second by Ian Raponi to issue negative determination. And that is category five, as I just uh, read, that it uh, meets the requirements for the following exemption. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Okay, we'll sign this tonight. And then I'll need to make a copy. And who should I send the uh, original to? To uh, Richard? Okay. I'll first send you probably a PDF scan of it and then follow it up with the actual uh, signed document. Okay, thank you. Vincent? On the bottom. Okay, so adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Daniel Blustein. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Voted. At 4.45. Uh, next meeting would be scheduled for December 5th, 2012. Should we have any business? Right now, we don't have anything scheduled, anything on the agenda.